before we really get started, let's do some angry looks for the thumbnail. Right, get, get the camera looking. Like, what? What? Like, come, come on. Really? Uh. I don't think so. I don't think so. <laughs> we didn't pick any ads. Oh, well. Hey, hum. everyone. I'm Ryan. And I'm Steven, 60 Cycle. Hum, the guitar buying, selling, trading, fixing, breaking, modding, reviewing, playing podcast. Yes, that's true. Hey, Steve, we had a topic sent to us yeah. by Math Lass? Math Eus? I think it's Math Ius. Ius. And he says, should tribute Maybe bands. Math Lass. Math lass. Should tribute bands really be dressing up or is the whole act overrated? Should they just play the music? I think, I personally think that like if you're in a tribute band, you should definitely be dressing up. Like doing the whole thing, especially if the, the act that you're covering like did any sort of costuming at all or yeah. had any sort of I, look at all. I think if, I think it depends, like so to me, the difference between I guess between a cover band and a tribute band, right? A cover band is covering an era. Maybe they're covering all. They could er cover. They could cover all eras. They're, I mean, I you know, I'm fine with cover bands that are just like, oh, we cover like top forty rockets, like yeah. Whatever. If you're if you're like top, the, if you're a top forty cover band, you got to know Matchbox Twenty and you got to know the Beatles, right? I think in that in that scenario. No, just just wear whatever you want. Just dress for the gig, you know. Probably you should be wearing white New Balances. If <laughs> if if you're playing a wedding, dress for a wedding. If you're yeah. playing a, a dive bar, dress for a dive bar. If you are a tribute band, and this tribute band does exist in San Diego, called Led Zepp again, you damn well <laughs> right. better be dressing up like Led Zeppelin. Or at least Greta Van Fleet. <laughs> <laughs> if you are in the band The Bastard Sons of Johnny Cash, or right. no, no, is, are The Bastard Sons of Johnny Cash a cover band or tribute band? I think they were. I'm thinking of there's a there was another band called Cashed Out. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Cashed yeah. Out is who I'm thinking of. I don't know what they dress like, but they better be wearing black. They as better long be wearing saying. black. I, yeah. I gotta imagine they're wearing. They're got to be wearing some kind of western wear. Like if if you're a Beatles cover band. You're gonna have costumes. You gotta have costumes. Like I don't care if yeah. you if yeah. each member of the band dresses as a different era of Beatles costume, but you you have to represent the look of the Beatles. Like same with you know, like Beach Boys. Same with like any of these bands that have like a solid look. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like there's some bands like who they didn't have a look. So who cares? Who right. cares? Like I have I have a friend that uh, online who used to be in a Misfits cover band. Guess what? They dressed like the misfits. What do the you, misfits dress like? Uh, they have I like the, have the hair spike. They were like black oh, okay. sleeveless shirts and stuff like that, you know. <laughs> Leather straps and whatnot. They did they painted their faces white. They did the whole okay. thing. They did the whole thing. Um Yeah. Tribute bands should be dressing up. I th I think it's I can't imagine a debate that would say that they shouldn't be. Yeah. I think that's what may if you are if you are in a tribute band and you don't try to do some kind of costuming, then you're really just in a cover band that only covers one artist. Right. You're you're not made you're not tributing. Well, you're you not think, paying tribute. You think of a tribute band, like people are going to go see you. They might like you eventually, like, hey man, this is a really good tribute band and I really enjoy going to their shows. They put on a good show good show. But their 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 main reason to go watch you is because they're fans of the source material of the source artist and they kind of want to see you do your best job of representing that there's this theater. They want to watch a theater reproduction of, you know, their favorite band or whatever. I think um, it's a no brainer. How important do you think it is for your tribute band to uh, have a name that reflects the tribute? I think people should know by the name that they should at least be able to suspect by the name what you're what you're tributing so if your tribute name band name was surfs up what do you think they're tributing to that could be a bunch of different bands all right well in this case it's the beach boy well that's appropriate 
Um, yeah. It, like there's a, there's a local band called dead man's party. Yeah. That one's, that one's easy. Oingo Boingo. They're an Oingo Boingo tribute band. Yeah. There's one called zoo two. <laughs> I wonder who that could be. Right. You know, <laughs> are, do they dress up like animals? Like the, the time that you don't dress up like the tribute that you're covering is when you have such a strong theme on your own that you, that you change it. Like you dress up like you too, but you're also wearing animal makeup. Like, I don't know if they do that, but they better be doing something like that. Zoo two. Please tell me that that's a band that like only plays at the zoo. No, they're, they're a U2 cover band, a tribute band. And they play anywhere but the zoo. And they don't play. Yeah. They absolutely do not play at the zoo. They refuse to play at the zoo. Um, yeah, because I think you two had an album. Didn't they have an album called Zoo something? Oh, did they? I don't know. Am I, I missing the reference? There's a reference that I'm not getting. I think so. Right. Like if I was going to start a president's cover band, we could be called the vice presidents of the United States. Oh, America, there you go. You know, like yeah, you you two had an album called Zooropa. Ah, uh, okay. So if I was going to start a cake cover band, I could call it Cupcake. Mm. Um, or pancakes. <laughs> You, I would. You should just call it the distance. The distance. There you go. Like naming it after a song is is a smart it's way to gotta go. It's got to be like I don't know if for for cake if it could be the distance. Uh, <laughs> obviously, if you were in a cake tribute band, your band should be called Frank Sinatra. Right, right. Because then people will know. <laughs> oh yeah, the, uh, this band is called Frank Sinatra. They must be a cake cover band that named themselves after the cake song Frank Sinatra. People would definitely make that connection. This is a, uh, I kind of like this one. This is a tribute band oh, that's fun. called the Faux Fighters. The Faux Fighters, F-A-U-X. That's uh, smart. There's the Dave Matthews experience, which I, anything that's a blank Ooh. experience, I think it's kind of lazy. No, that's kind of misleading. Cause yeah. like, like imagine the person that's oh, no. on a, that's of the age where they're like, man, I want to go see a show this weekend. I'm going to go down to Humphreys by the Bay. Who's playing? Dave Matthews no, you experience. Know what? These tickets are so cheap. I had no idea it would be so cheap this, to go see Dave this, Matthews this experience. This article, the way they phrase this is bad. This band is called Stepping Feet, <laughs> which sounds like it should be a Steppenwolf cover right. band. <laughs> Matchbox 22. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's Is that what they're called? <laughs> that's funny. Matchbox 20, the sequel. Yeah, Matchbox 20 also. <laughs> 20 there's, well. an El, there's an Elvis cover band called, or Elvis tribute called Graceland. That, that's pretty yeah, good. Yeah, that works. <laughs> you have, <laughs> can I be Frank Sinatra <laughs> tribute show? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think that being funny is a major hallmark of being a good, oh my god, like tribute band. Okay, if you can't, if you don't want to dress as the people, you got to dress as your theme. Nuns and Moses is a Guns and Roses tribute act. Nuns and Moses, they are dressed as either nuns or in like prof in ancient times biblical clothing. <laughs> 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 Instead of like Paradise City, it's like take me down to the promised land, maybe. <laughs> you didn't make it, Steve. I'm just going through some of these other ones. Oh, four, there's a, four lads from Liverpool is a band that's a Beatles tribute. They all have the Beatles wigs. They I have the, wee, maybe they that's have the, the wigs. They have the suits. Some of these are tributes, but they're not really like. They're not cool names, so I don't right. know, I'm just scrolling by. British Mania. So that's Beatles like... Beatles tribute. You hire the band called British Mania to play, you know, your, you know, graduation party or something like oh, that. Brit They're like, you're not, you're not, you know, you see British Mania, like, listed in front of a venue. You're like, oh, honey, we got to come back from that. That sounds like it'll be wild. Like, that's the band you hire because they will do Beatles covers, you know. They're, you hire them for your wedding reception or something. Yeah, apparently... Uh <laughs> like Dead Man's Party, you're like, man, I gotta check them out. This sounds like a wild their show. Their tag is: Have you heard of Microsoft, AT and T, Southwest Airlines, The Wall Street Journal, Guess, Cointro Liquor, Park West Galleries, Sentient Science? 
British Mania is your corporate connection. Oh my. Okay. Yeah. So they do. Corporate, no, it's they totally, do corporate parties. Total corporate gig vibe. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. You. You know. You, you know. Whoever's hiring them for the corporate gig wants the safest bet they can get, and that's Brit- going to be the British safe bet. Mania. Isn't an act. British Mania is a company that only hires full time top Beatles musicians. What? So it's a service that supplies you with Beatles cover bands. British Mania can perform up to five costume changes from very early Cavern Club through the Sgt. Pepper era and on to the Abbey Road Let It Be era. Uh, I wonder if the, how many sets of costumes they have and if they only hire people that will fit in them. <laughs> well, so here's a question along that is how much, uh, how much uh, does the gear matter? I think, I think, I would, I mean... My take is mm. I think the gear matters depending on like if you're who doing costume changes for a Beatles cover band, do you also change instruments to match that era of Beatles? Ooh. You know? I would say like with the something someone like the Beatles, the expectation at a minimum would be an Epiphone acoustic, uh a Rickenbacker, like a uh three twenty five, you know, just like John Lennon played. Didn't they use a dot? Um or oh, there the were those. One? There were those Epiphone. Yeah, later they had the Epiphone uh, casinos. Casinos. The casino that's model. The one. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Hoff, like a Hoffner or some kind of violin bass. The Beatle bass. Yeah. Um, but then if you're going to see like, um, a Guns and Roses, I guess if we're Guns and Roses tribute, you expect to see a Les Paul. But I don't know what anyone actually. I do know uh, Duff McKagan played a Precision. No, it's called a Jazz Special. It was a precision based body with a PJ configuration. Okay. Anyway, uh, but I don't know that like that people are gonna think like, oh, I saw this Guns N' Roses tribute band and their bass player wasn't playing a PJ bass. Like if you, but I do think yeah. if you saw a Beatles cover band and their bass player wasn't playing a Hofner bass, you'd kind of be like, huh. Like there's there's certain exceptions. Like I think it when it comes to gear, there's certain pieces of gear that are iconic for each band. Yeah. And so it's like Beatles, yeah, you got to have a Rickenbacker on stage. Mm-hmm. You got to have a Beatle bass on stage. Like the Who, you got to have a great big drum kit. Oh, you yeah. can't there do you a go. Who. Co- like, I think for the Beatles, no one's going to care what drum kit you have. For a lot of bands, no one's going to care about what bass or, or drum kit or whatever. Like, it's certainly, like, if there's keys on stage, no one's going to care what keyboard you have. Mm-hmm. But if you're doing a Who cover band and you don't have the right drum kit, people are going to be like, what the hell? Yeah, yeah, you know, like it doesn't look right, you know, something's wrong. And that's that's something I think that could is probably a, a big difference between a proper tribute band and a cover band is right. again, if I went to see a cover band and they're playing, you know, Miserloo on a Les Paul, I'm just going to kind of be like, all right, whatever. A cover band has but, wiggle room yeah, conceptually. If you go to see a Dick Dale tribute act right. and the guy's playing Les Paul, you're going to be like, what the hell? If I see a, a Dick Dale tribute band and they don't have a gold sparkle strat, with it's all it's all wrong. It's all wrong. Like all wrong. it's fine if they play it right-handed. It's fine. Yeah. yeah. But if they're not trying to hit the look, then that's not really a tribute band, is it? No. You kind of have to do the costume. You have to pay tribute. You're paying tribute. Pay tribute. I'm not saying you need to like cut your hair and you know go on a very specific diet to match the body style of Dick Dale or whoever. Yeah. Like it's fine for you to be the physical person that you are. But costuming is something, you know? I tried to start a G.G. Allen tribute band, but apparently venues don't want you throwing your feces around. <laughs> yes, yeah, I could see Steve, like, totally like, oh, man, I'm, I'm totally going to cut myself with beer bottles and rub my feces in it and then throw it around the stage. Like That's yeah, what Steve yeah. wishes he could get away with. That's my deal. That's my jam. <laughs> All right. That's what I'm into. I think we've we've done this topic to death. Thank you for the topic suggestion. Uh, I forgot the name of the guy already. I'm sorry. Math. Math lass. All right. This first ad was sent by... We, pick? we usually pick them ahead of time, but Michael we forgot. Michael Krause. It's a fur bird. A fur bird. This, uh, he mentioned this, I think, because Josh Scott was on the group a few weeks back asking about good sources for reverse firebirds. Ah, uh, well this is uh this was sold for $1600 in Dublin, New Hampshire. Does that sound low to you? Kind of, but It's a 199 it's a 1966 Gibson non-reverse firebird 3 for $1600. Yeah, but Ryan, 
It's a well-used guitar. It does have lots of mojo. It's been played a lot, but I always take that as a good sign with instruments. Original P90s, bridge was replaced at some point with it, and headstock was replaced. So it's apparently okay, had it's, a, it's had seen a some action, but it's still in 1966. Uh, neck pickup could probably be rewound. Uh, everything functions as it should. Comes with hard shell case. This is a player's guitar and not a collector's piece. I've gigged with it and owned for about 10 years. Any questions? Let me ask. Um, I I kind of think the possibly the wear and tear on this. Um, well, yeah, it's got a lot of aftermarket stuff going on. You can tell that the headstock has been replaced. It is a different quality of finishing and wood on it. Um, but it all looks clean. It looks like everything that was done to it was done correctly. Like the bridge was replaced and you can see um, the studs where it was. Oh, also like a oh, look at this. Look where the strings sit on the saddles. The saddles were recut. Because oh. the bridge wasn't put in the right place. And so this like that bottom string is barely hanging onto the edge of the saddle, which is is something that is uh if you go look at my um my explorer parts guitar, that's yeah, what the bridge looks like. But you know, the strings all line up with the pickup poles, so it is in technically correct position. It's just they're offset on those uh bridge saddles. This price does seem really low. I'm looking at a Firebird one. 1966 on reverb for $18,000. Right. I mean, it's, it's, this has been roughed up, but it looks like it's in playable condition. It's probably in better playable condition than a lot of 1966 but may, Firebirds. You know, maybe, I don't know, is this a, this a model thing? Because there's a Gibson Firebird 3 uh, P90s in a 1966 in a natural finish for five grand. I could see it if that one's really clean, like the three, you know, basically three thousand dollar difference being warranted. Oh, it says it was sprayed natural, so this is a refinish apparently. Oh, okay. But it doesn't have a new headstock and and, yeah. and mangled bridge situation. I don't know. I mean, it sold, so obviously someone thought it was a good price. Obviously, here's another sixty six Firebird three for five grand. It's only got one pickup, uh, but you know, to your point, like you're saying, like. This is these two examples I found that are asking five grand are also like player condition instruments, right? Right. They're not in good condition. Um, but you know, people are still, uh, and the, they're you still know, asking this, five grand. So a lot of this relicking just looks good to me. <laughs> you know, yeah, a lot of this yeah. wear and tear. Yeah. It's this is a case of like this guitar has been played because it must have been a fun player. It looks like it was played a lot, so it must be good, you know? Look, look, look at all the battle damage on the back. There's a lot of belt rash going on. Someone really, really loved playing this guitar. So would this originally would have had, like, a vibrato system on it? Yeah. Is that what's one going of the on It would have had one of the vibrolas on it. You can, the, I mean, you can tell by the screws that are yeah. on there. Yeah. So it wouldn't have originally had the stop tail, so the stop tail is aftermarket, obviously. Mm-hmm. I mean, I mean, Vibrolas are cool, or the Maestros, whichever you know brand name you call them by, model name. Um, but I haven't found them to be incredibly useful as wiggle sticks. Like I think the stop tail is is a just fine modification on this. Um, it probably makes it more playable in the grand scheme of things. Yeah. I mean, it looks great to me. If, this, if I had seen this for 1600 bucks, I wouldn't have bought it because I don't have that kind of money to throw around on guitars personally. I've got bills to pay. Uh, but I would have looked at it. I would have sat there and looked at it for a while. Like, do I, do, do I have the money? Can, should I sell some things? Should I sell some things and get this? And then I would have seen like, oh, this had major repairs and major modifications. So maybe not. But I still would have been like, hmm, maybe I should have that. <laughs> Like I'm feeling tempted just looking at it right now and it's not even for sale anymore. I'm looking at, Oh, I guess it doesn't, maybe this isn't the original pick guard either. Cause it doesn't have the firebird on the pick guard. Oh no, it's just worn off. I think it's just worn off. That pick guard looks well, well used. Yeah. I think it's just worn off. If it wasn't see the remnants of it, right? If it wasn't, if it's not the original pick guard, then it's definitely a pick guard of the same right age or it's been 
artificially aged to I, match I'm, its I'm age. I'm looking at one. I'm looking at a model that's severely checked. Look at that checking. Yeah. On reverb for seven grand, it does have the original. That checking is of pretty. Vibrato, um, and they are asking seven grand. So yeah, you know, I think I. I think sixteen hundred is low. I don't think five grand is right either. I think maybe somewhere in three to four. No, Have, this should not go for five. But I think you're right. That I think, I I bet you anything that, that whoever bought this was like, if I don't like it, it's a it's a clear flip. Yeah, this yeah. is a clear flip. Like you you could potentially make a thousand bucks pretty easy mm-hmm. buying this for sixteen hundred bucks and then flipping it for twenty six. 36 maybe maybe the person who bought this watches it watches the jhs show maybe and was like i bet I'm or sure maybe josh has mentioned it or this. maybe josh bought this he was looking for a non-reverse firebird maybe he saw this and he bought it maybe he's the one doesn't say anything about dublin new should. hampshire is yeah that's sold? that's pretty much right next to kansas yeah next door neighbors right yeah practically geography podcasting here guys so you know congratulations to whoever got it I, I think you got a good deal. All right. Next ad. Uh, now we got to do a sponsor spot for big ear pedals. Uh, if you want a really cool reverb, they have the L. Mm-hmm. If you want a really, really holds together at all gains, fuzz, get yourself a loaf. The loaf is great. I love the loaf for uh, like low range instruments, like baritones, mm-hmm. basses, mm-hmm. stuff like that. It, loaf in my mind stands for low AF. It, it technically stands for, you know, the cute little thing that bunny rabbits do. But I think it stands for low AF. And AF stands for as fudge. Low as, as fudge. fudge. Low as fudge. <laughs> um, low ass fuzz is what it stands for. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Uh, you got the woodcutter, which is a rat, oh. rat style distortion. The woodcutter. call it rat style. It's a, it is kind of like, it's an, an amazing rat. There's something about it that just has like. It has this like warmth and smoothness to it that mm-hmm. it's hard for me to like explain, but it just feels better to me yeah. than the vast majority of rats that I've tried in my life. And then they've got the Albi. And then they have the Albi, don't they? Yep. The Albi is a curated multi effect. It's the most simple multi effect on the planet. One knob, one rotary switch, one switch to turn it on and off. That's it. And it is a multi effect stacking, reverbs, delays, modulations. It's great. It sounds super good. If go, you want go something, get one. if you want something that takes you into new wave territory at the click of a button. Yep. There it is. The Albi. So go check them out. Bigearpedals.com. Get on the mailing list. Follow them on your socials and you'll find out when things go on sale. All right. What's new, man? Oh, what's new? Oh, man. I don't know. It's a new year. A new me. It's a new life for us, and you're feeling good? Yeah, I'm feeling good about, you know, the year 2022. That's the year, right? Mm. It matters. The the yes. number of the year matters to me. Apparently, February 2nd, 2022 is a Tuesday. So it's like 2 2 is a Tuesday. I don't think I have anything new worth mentioning right oh, now. Man. I don't know, man. Do you have anything new worth mentioning? Nah. Nah. Nothing new, guys. There's wow. nothing new. Blowing through. It's all about old stuff now. That's what's new for me. Just old stuff. You know what's new? Old. I've been I've been hatching a plan that I might execute some point this year. Um I'm tired of trying to sell stuff locally, like guitars. Oh, right, right. Guitars and amps and stuff locally. Um, because I mean this is a humble brag. And it's dumb thing to bring up but every, pretty much every other time that i sell something locally on craigslist mm-hmm. uh the person i'm selling it to is like oh hey i just watched your video <laughs> yeah. on this thing that i'm buying from you and it's gotten a little bit too weird i think mm-hmm. to have people coming to my house to sell stuff or now i'm just like okay let's meet at a gas station or whatever and it's just taking too much time i've been playing with the idea of um, partnering up with Moe's mm-hmm. locally. It was a local guitar shop and doing like a, a consignment thing there with, right, with right, like yeah. gu- that guitars and amps and then like leaving like a sign up on the guitar that says, you know, as seen on 60 cycle hum. And it can be kind of like an advertising thing for them. Like, hey, you want to go check out this guitar? 
this, you know, budget guitar that Ryan got. And then he like messed up the pickups and replaced them or whatever, <laughs> or did some, some sort of awful paint job. You can come visit it and you can come check it out and see what it's like. And then you can buy it if you want to, you know, yeah, that'd be cool. I might, I, I've been playing with that idea, you know, also I hate shipping things. Yeah. So there's if, that if too. If they're down to ship for you, then people can. Yeah, and I can buy it off, buy it online from them, and I also want. Out. I want to cover a lot more budget guitars. Mm -hmm. I want to, you know, I want to buy them and have them show up, and then do my thing, and then you know, move them along, and not have to ship them to anyone or have to do deal with all that sort of nonsense. So, I might be. I'm thinking about it. I'm thinking about it, guys. So I guess that's a, what's new for well, me. Well, you need to finish the Affordistrat series, right? Yeah, I've got one more I have to do with that. Maybe, hopefully, I'll be doing that around the week when this publishes. Oh, do you have the strat already? I don't, but I, I'm close to picking, I think. All right. All right. Next ad? Yeah, you want to pick this one? Yeah, we're just going in order. This one I labeled Stud. It was sent to us by Neil Nation. Um, is that how you say his last name? Neil? Why not? Natian? Nation? Natian? Correct us in the comments, Neil. Um, this is the brand of the guitar is Stud. Or the model of the guitar is stud. It is made by Ampeg. Interesting. It is a clear SG lawsuit era kind of like bolt-on sort of concept. I've never seen that headstock shape before. And honestly, like, I can't decide if I love it or despise it. It's like if a, a Martin headstock went a little metal. <laughs> like, if, imagine a Martin headstock. Now make it pointy. <laughs> Like, how is that even possible? It's the pointy version of a square. I think I like it. I kind of wish it wasn't so long. Like, I wish it cut off just below where the word stud is. Like, I still want stud to be on there, obviously. Obviously, I want it to say stud. But I wish the headstock wasn't quite as long. This was listed for $500. It has a lot of really interesting qualities to it. Yeah. Vintage 1970s Ampeg stud get 100 Solid double cutaway. Da, 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 da. Haven't played in 30 years. Wow. A couple of nicks. They want $500 for it. I wonder if that's fair. So a few interesting things about this. Mm -hmm. Look at the placement of the bridge pickup. It's way more north, way closer to the neck than a standard uh, SG. It almost looks like it's set up to be a baritone. But I know it's not. Yeah. I know it's not. Like, this is just what happens when you do a bolt-on version of an SG. Like, everything has to move around a bit. Mm -hmm. Because the neck doesn't meet up at the same place. That's a really interesting bridge pickup placement. Like, it's gonna, it's not going to be super bright. It's going to be a darker sort of tonality there. Also, the, the, the bridge saddles itself looks like it's like a Jazzmaster hybrid bridge. Yeah, it looks like a Jazzmaster bridge. And then you you even have the it's got those bumps. It has the the buzz stop roller installed yeah. there. I don't know if that was stock or if that is a new add on because it's feeding to an off brand Bigsby, which honestly looks really good. <laughs> I like think, it's a cool looking Bigsby knockoff. I think some of those like older Bigsby knockoffs were like they got a lot closer. Than, right. than the modern one, no, modern knockoffs. Like do. it looks like that soft nickel kind of worn in sort of yeah. look. It looks decent quality. I mean, maybe it's terrible to play. It probably is terrible to play, but there's a lot about this that's compelling. And I even like what's going on with the German carve around the edge. Like that's different than a normal SG on those horns. Oh, I didn't notice that. Yeah. It's more of a severe, uh, Severe cut there, for sure. I, I'm willing to call BS on the price, like 500 bucks. I kind of doubt that this is... You think 500 is that too high? I think it's... Some of this quirky, like, I mean, Japanese it is, stuff, and the fact that it has it is an Ampeg. Amber, or Ampeg. It is Ampeg. It's not like, you know, some you know brand you've never yeah, heard of before. it's not like Ampeg Dan Armstrong. Because, like, the Ampeg Dan Armstrong stuff is going for thousands of dollars, like two or three grand now. Right, right. Let's check Reverb real quick and see if we can find an... Ampeg. Uh, the the it's called a Get One Hundred G E T. Get One Hundred. It's not called a uh, a stud. Oh, or maybe yeah, maybe you should have just looked up Ampeg Stud. The Ampeg Stud Muffin. There we go. I looked up Ampeg Stuff. 
Okay, there's a bunch of stuff coming up under Ampeg Stud, but it's all different models. I don't see an SG. I'm seeing uh, a base mm-hmm. for four ninety five. Mm-hmm. It looks like a P base sort of variation. A couple of those, one for nine hundred, one for six seventy nine, one for six twenty five, and then a, a Telecaster style for six hundred. So maybe this price is fair. Yeah, I I found there's none available in natural, uh, but when I looked this up. I saw, I'm seeing a bunch of different things. There was one that was, it did sell uh, for $500. So maybe that's where they got their price from. Oh my gosh, Steve. The the uh, the P-Base variation? Yeah. The headstock. It has the headstock that you like. Uh-huh. And it says, little stud. That's cute. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean it, it kind of looks like 500 is around the point that people are trying to people are trying. Um uh, Guitar Center has them has one it looks like for listed for $700 and they're used. So it it just kind of seems like that's the price, you know, and it that's doesn't, kind of to me it doesn't look like a cuz I've played, you know, some cheap SG lawsuit knockoff era guitars and they never played awesome, they never sounded awesome. It doesn't look like it's going to play or sound awesome to me. And the guy said he said he hasn't played in 30 years. Yeah. So, I mean, it didn't it didn't inspire him to keep going, so no. that doesn't give me good feelings. He probably feelings. got like a real SG and he's like, I'm never playing that thing again. Right. No, I I got the vibe that from the listing, like, oh, I just stopped playing guitar. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, no. He says, I haven't played this guitar in over uh, 30 years. Oh, okay. Uh, it's been sitting in storage. So that's why I was thinking, like, well, it sounds like he just got something gotcha. he'd rather play. I mean, if it was good enough, it wouldn't sit in storage, right? Yeah. Imagine how much money he paid over th- 30 years to store it. Jeez. I, I would rather not. I don't want to think about that. Don't store things, guys. Just throw it out in the street and forget about it. It's going to cost you more money to store it. <laughs> That's fair. That's true. Give it away. Give your stuff away. If you want it later, buy it back from someone. Yeah. What would Anthony Kiedis do? He'd, he'd give, give it away now. Give it away now. Yeah. yeah. And then he'd, then, he'd, then he'd think about California for a while. Yeah. And then he'd write a song about it. Uh, should we just keep going and keep rushing through? Well, let's do, uh, let's do another sponsor spot. All right. This episode is also brought to you by Chase Plus Audio, makers of the mood and other pe- pe- pedals, other pedals Piedals. that are more creative than you are. The digital brain and analog heart, Chase Bliss Audio. They, they just, at its core, great pedal. Mm-hmm. On its craziest settings, a crazy pedal. <laughs> <laughs> Every chaseless pedal can be the craziest pedal in your collection, but it also can be a very useful and very normal sounding pedal too. It just takes exploring and getting to know them and memorizing the literal tens of thousands, maybe hundreds of thousands of oh combinations of settings you can achieve with the dip switch bank on the back and all the presets and expressions and MIDI stuff that you can do with them. They are honestly like the most powerful single spaced pedals on the market. Like yep. I can't, I think that's true. I I don't think that's a lie, right? Like it's ridiculous what Chase. I can't think can of do. anything else. So go check Unless out. there's like some like digital multi-effect thing that sits in a single space. But even then it's like, yeah, it's, it's bonkers the amount of engineering that goes into Chase Bliss pedals. So huge thanks to Chase Bliss for once again, sponsoring this ridiculous nonsense. <laughs> Everyone go support them when you can by yourself an anniversary of Christmas gift somewhere in the middle of summer. Celebrate <laughs> Christmas in July is what I'm saying. I know it's January, but plan it out. Talk to your financial planner. Make a plan. Make it happen. Oh, my gosh. This <laughs> ad was sent by Michael Kraus. This is a supersonic deal. It's a supersonic. They comes- Fender, Fender guitar and amp, $200. That's a really good deal on this. Mm-hmm. We got some good deals this episode, Steve. Comes with all wires, plugs, and guitar case. It looks pretty much unused. Yeah. It is unmolested in any significant way. Maybe some, tell. you know what? Somebody probably got, literally somebody probably got this for Christmas and was like, for whatever reason, they don't want it. Yeah. And now it's being sold. That's totally, totally possible. But for 200 bucks, this is a no-brainer. And I think people said in the comments, like, you buy this, 
you sell the amp, it's like you got a guitar for free. Yeah. Like, I don't, I don't know, if, know if you can get 200 for that amp, but, but I think you could get, you could get over a hundred for the amp probably. Yeah. Yeah. You, you could, you could definitely get, you could, if you sold the amp, you would end up with the supersonic at a price where you would, if you don't sell it, if you ever bond with that guitar at all, it's going to be really hard to sell it because you're going to be like, I got such a good deal on this. Right. I'll never get that deal again. I'll never again. get that deal again. Yeah, totally. Or maybe you love the amp and you hate the guitar and you sell the guitar and keep the amp. <laughs> a lot of people... You could sell this guitar and basically get the amp for free. That a, is true. A lot of people love those Mustang amps. Like there's, you know, fandom for them. Yeah. Steve disagrees, but I've, I've seen I've, I've people never be pl- fans of them. I've never played one. I just can't imagine being a fan of a practice amp. I don't know. They're out there. I mean, there's fandom for everything out there. Yeah. And I know that like people like the older Mustang amps more than some of the newer ones that have come out. Yeah. There's some mojo in there, some magic, How, and, magic this, in the code. You think this is old? Is this I think older? it's one of the older ones. It's not one of the no. new ones. Yeah. Because it has that logo on the front. Oh, okay. But yeah, this definitely yeah. seems like it's a uh, Christmas something happened someone got something for christmas or I maybe know. i mean the amp being an older model makes me think that maybe not yeah or maybe this is a situation of someone trying to afford christmas like i need to sell this so i can buy well at this point know. it's so they can pay off their credit card right so right i need to buy it i need to sell this so i can buy a playstation sort of thing yeah or maybe they got new stuff and so they're selling their old stuff. ah yeah maybe 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 they're getting a super Sonic that's Ooh. more super than this Sonic. This is the re- It's hard to tell from the photo, but I think this. Oh, it might be the gray. This is the gray. I thought it was the blue one, which is a more recent color. So yeah, this isn't brand new. This this is the the run from over a year ago that was gray sparkle. All right, good deal. Yeah, let's just keep going, man. We got we got two more ads we could. All do. right, man. What's the next ad? This ad is uh, sent by Brian Woodruff. It's for a set of PVT60 pickups, which are for more money than I would have thought they would go for. But then when you, when you think about it, like where else are you going to get them? Yeah. So if you want these pickups, you, you have to wait for someone to take them out of a PVT60 or what, you know, PVT15 or wh- whichever models had these. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. And then you're going to pay an upcharge on them. They're, they want 250 bucks for the set. They originally wanted 300 bucks for the set. They don't look like they're in perfect condition. Like the black yeah. coating on the top is they, wearing away. They are wearing. open to offers. Um, so I can't say if this price is fair, but you're absolutely right. Like if you're trying to do a restoration job on a mm. PVT60, the thing is, is, is. The thing is, is. Would you want to do a restoration job I know. on a PVT sixty? Well, we've recently those have gone up in value. All those those PV things have they gone up enough to justify two hundred and fifty dollars for a pair of pickups? I think they're fetching like a grand now for those guitars. Really? Because when we started this show, is like you could still pick those up for like three hundred bucks at pawn shops. That was yeah. like eight years ago, and yeah. for some reason, I think people have connected with the look. And there's people out there who like heavy guitars now. You know, all you aluminum neck nuts out there <laughs> have probably found out about these and like, oh, that's heavy. It's not aluminum, but it's heavy. Yeah. And they kind of have a look that could fit with, you know, a doomy sort of vibe, I guess, like a throwback kind of like 80s, 70s wood panel sort of look. <laughs> you know, I think there's people out there that appreciate the look of them and maybe like that vibe. So maybe they have a restored interest in them. But they're very funky guitars. It's like one of those things where they reinvented the wheel with every part, like brand mm-hmm. new style bridge, brand new style pickups. Like you can't replace anything. So the, uh, interestingly, these pickups are on uh, Reverb. There is also a neck from another seller. Uh, from, But it's also a 1979 T60. But this is being sold out of Alabama. For how much is the neck? 250 And All then... Right. That same seller that's selling the neck is also selling the body for $150. You still need to get the bridge, but we've got a kit cooking here. Yeah. So for, let's see, $150, $250, so that's $400, $650, and now you just need pick guard, tuners, miscellaneous hardware. You put this thing together, you're getting that spending a thousand bucks. 
Yeah. You could just buy one for about a thousand bucks. Right. <laughs> I mean, the, the blonde, this is a, this is the blonde and I'm seeing actually then that's specifically 1979. So if you expand that out, uh, prices drop down to like seven fifty plus shipping. Mm-hmm. So you could do better. I would just, you know, in, are people going to buy these pickups and put them in a different guitar? Like I've never heard anyone rave about the pickups that were in those guitars. I've heard them be like, Oh man, they're just, you know, USA made PVs that had yeah. these like super heavy bodies and they probably sustain machines or whatever. But I never heard anyone wax poetic about the pickups themselves. Like, are they, are they good enough to warrant? A two hundred fifty dollar price tag before shipping. I kind of, I don't know. I kind of lean towards no. And what I will say is, I'm also kind of in the space. Like I have that PV generation, mm-hmm. um, and it's got the original PV pickups in it. But it's got some like crazy. I forget what's going on with the wiring, but the wiring in it's kind of crazy. And I'm like that's one where I kind of go through the same thing. I'm like should I just replace these? Like if I replace the wiring to make it like simpler, not that it's particularly, I don't think it's particularly complicated, but there's just a lot of, seems like there's a lot more going on there in the wiring than what I, in my memory is there. Uh, should I just put in like a simple, like Telecaster style wiring mm. harness and call it a day? Um, but then I, you know, I, with this old, older stuff, you kind of get stuck in the space of like, do I want to make this playable or do I just want to make it cool? Right. Like, and so, I mean, presumably there's probably people who have, you know, 80 year or not 80, like they bought a PVT 60 in 1979 and they threw it in their closet and it's been in 1986, but not before they put in a set of DiMarzio super distortions because they wanted to be like Bon Jovi or whatever. And, uh, and so now they're coming back and are like, yeah, you know what? Like, Maybe this would this, the original pickups looked cool, or maybe they want to use those Demarzios in another. Uh, Did Bon Jovi use those pickups? I don't know. Now I'm thinking you're going to get angry comments from people. They're like, Bon Jovi didn't use those pickups. I'm just saying, like, how I, dare you? Well, how, I think, could, how could you possibly not know? You have a guitar know, podcast and I you know. don't know what pickups Bon Jovi used. Jeez. Like, we're going to get that comment. I I I just. <laughs> Tried to pick the most generic, like, <laughs> 80s... 80s, early like, 90s act. Act. <laughs> to pair... Because the, the DiMarzio Super Distortion, like, is the pickup of that era. How dare you? Come yeah. on. Come Jeez. on. You, you Who gave you a guitar show? How Ugh. dare you? Well, no one, you gave, know, you, no one gave it to me. You I, just took it. You know, it's, it's, it's funny. It's funny. We live in this... We live in this era where people want to value producers. Why don't you make that yourself? Why do you, why does everyone want to be handed things? But then you go and make stuff yourself and people go, who gave you that? Right. No one. <laughs> no one gave us anything. Um, well, some people have helped us along yeah. the way. Thank you, everyone that helped us along the way. What, what, what would be wild, a wild flex is to buy these pickups. Light you know, them on fire. That would be a wild flex. And then mount them into like a $4,000 Les Paul. Someone's probably like, done that. Or like put one in the neck and then people will be like, whoa, those must have like some s- secret sauce to them. Like he's, he's mm-hmm, chosen mm-hmm. to put one of those in the neck of his guitar. And it probably just sounds like a PAF. So like, who cares? It sounds like, it probably sounds like a, a normal humbucker, but people will see it and be like, whoa. That's a very specific thing he's chosen to do. It must there must be a really good reason, you know. And yeah, you'll have a pickup in a Les Paul that no one else has in a Les Paul. Yeah, I kind of like that thought. I like that. Well, get dude, you, get yourself a Les Paul, and then get then go buy oh, these. Oh yeah, I have. I would have to do that, wouldn't I? I could yeah. put it in my SG. You could. Yeah. All right, let's do the last ad. Do you want to do housekeeping first? Let's do some housekeeping. Okay. Uh, thanks again to everyone who helps. Uh, support this show. If you want to help support the show, head on over to patreon.com or for as little as a dollar a month, you can uh, pay for some of the travel we'll do this year. We got Nam is back on the calendar for now. So uh, we're yeah. going to be footing some of that bill and that'll come out of Patreon. Uh, and uh, it also feeds us all the time. So yeah, yeah. We, uh, we had a meal today. Yep. Uh, thanks to a Patreon. <laughs> Robert actually bought lunch, oh, yeah. but we, we joked like, Hey, you know, like, 
you were going to pay for it eventually anyways because you're on a Patreon. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, we usually pay for our bi-weekly, our other other weekly meals for us to do the show so that, you know, we don't have to do extra cooking around podcasting nights and stuff like that. Uh, it, it covers travel. It costs, it, it travel, it, I can't talk. It covers, you know, all the production costs we have here on the podcast and the YouTube channel. So huge thanks to everyone that supports us via Patreon. And who knows, maybe someday we'll have so much support that we will be rich and we'll just retire and we'll steal all that money. And you'll never, you'll never hear from us again. And everyone will praise your name that you, that you helped take us out of the environment. <laughs> no one had to hear from us Jeez, again. Jeez, man. I'm weaving a tale here. That's dark. <laughs> Thank you, Patreons, for finally giving them enough money to quit. <laughs> All right. Thanks, everyone. I, we really appreciate it. All right. This last ad was sent by Lee Siebert, and it's titled Worst Guitar. Another $40 guitar. Um, it reads, this is by far the worst guitar I've ever seen. The body is made out of particle board. The neck doesn't have a truss rod. What? Uh, the neck plate is plastic and just covers up the screws that hold the neck on. I got it home and realized how bad it actually was. So I never even plugged it in. This would really only be good to use as an art project or something like that. $40 text only. I will not respond to emails or calls due to scammers. Thanks for looking. He didn't even mention so many of the more like interesting parts of this guitar. Yeah. How, I don't, I well, it gets, it gets worse the more I look at it. I have trouble believing that this is... And I remember when this came up, having this conversation in the group. Uh, I have trouble believing this is the worst guitar maybe that this person's ever seen. But this guitar, can it really be in that bad of a condition to have this much effort put into it? It's... Okay, this is like a Strat-style build. It looks like it must be like short scale or something because the pickups look bigger mm -hmm. and the body looks shorter. Did you see the bridge? Yeah, the bridge is like a base bridge. It's really weird. Um, it the neck has been scalloped, of course. Of course, it has six switches on it and four knobs, but it's a three yeah. pickup strat layout, which means just in switches and knobs, this guitar is almost breaking even. <laughs> if you're looking for cheap switches and knobs, this might be a good deal for you. Um, why why four knobs? It doesn't look like. The pick guard is modified in any weird way, and the knobs all have even spacing, which makes me think it originally had four knobs. Oh. And, like, I'm not seeing any modif... They had to have replaced the pick guard for this tap. This can't be stock, right? I don't, I don't know. It's volume, 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 volume. <laughs> Control, no tone. <laughs> or maybe it's a volume for each pickup and a master tone. I mean, you want to know why there's four knobs. I want to know why there's six switches yeah. with three pickups. And it's two banks of three switches each. Yeah, this is, there's a lot of bonkers the, happening the, here. The output jack is a strat output jack, but it's white. Like, is that plastic or is that painted metal? Well, they're saying that the neck plate is plastic and the neck plate's also white. So maybe they're both plastic. We didn't get a high quality photo of the no. of the rest of it. We just see this one photo that I'm showing you guys. But it, from the other photos, it looks like the neck is is scalped all the way up, um, and it looks really, really deep, really, really deep. Oh man! But that bridge, like it. What's going on there is that you know you have when you have a Telecaster bridge and it has three saddles yeah. and it has a screw for each one. You look at it like, oh, maybe this is a three saddle Telecaster bridge. No, it's oh. a one saddle strap bridge that just happens to be on a plate. It has two screws going into it to adjust the placement of the bridge for intonation. But it's it's one monolithic it might, it saddle. It might be two saddles, and they might just be very evenly aligned. Uh, I, I think I've that's seen, I think that's one monolithic saddle. I've seen this bridge on various import bases before, so this isn't. That's that's why I'm saying like it looks like a base bridge. There's not enough pixels to really tell what's going on. Yeah. Oh, needs, and the, needs more pixels. The strap buttons are white too, so they must be plastic. What the I hell? don't know. What the hell's going on here? $40? Uh, no, thank you. 40 You don't want to pay $40 to solve the mystery? 
No, this is, you know, this is another scalped neck $40 guitar. Was that this episode or was that last episode? Uh, that was uh, last episode. The this Squire Parts. Another $40 scalped neck guitar. The last one, I was like enthusiastic. Yeah, yo, go, go, go buy it. Yeah, yeah. This one, unless you need knobs and switches, <laughs> I'm not getting a good vibe from this. Yeah, it's junk. It's got to be junk. I would offer 20 for 20 it's, it's worth it to get the switches and get some parts out of it and just look at it and be like, what the hell? And then burn it in the fireplace. You're I super- would offer 60 and burn it in a driveway. <laughs> if this was a super rich Steve scenario, you would offer 600. Yeah. Oh, that that's a really rare configuration. What's the, what's the biggest dollar bill? Is that like a thousand dollars? Is there like a thousand dollar bill? Um, there's some like not really circulated large bills. I forget what sizes. Like I think the largest, but non circulated bill I want to say is ten or fifty thousand. Wow, but I could see super uh, rich Steve only carrying large bills like that, and just like here you go. Here is currency. I don't like change. Yeah, yeah. you know, just and then burning it in just, the driveway. Just drop a stack, a stack of bennies right there. Super uh, rich. Super this rich, is all I have. Super rich. Steve shows up in his Bentley, being driven by his loyal butler. You roll. You roll up to the front door. Oh yeah, I'm here for the guitar. They hand it to you. You're like, um, I don't like change. So here you go. Just keep it all. It's like a. It's like a ten thousand dollar bill or something like that. And then they watch you walk out to the Bentley. And being towed behind the Bentley is a wood chipper. (laughs) And you just (laughs) toss it in there. And then you'd hop in on to the next deal, Jeeves. (laughs) No, my butler's name is Barry. Barry, Barry, take me to the next location where I may acquire another guitar to liberate from this mortal world. There's someone who's going to be like, how do you make all this money? I'm like, well, I sell mulch. (laughs) Obviously. <laughs> guitar mulch. <laughs> There's a business right there. Guitar mulch. Mulch oh, made from guitars that you can grow food in. Oh, man. These tomatoes have great tone. <laughs> <laughs> the color is good and the taste is wonderful, but the tone of these tomatoes. Oh, and these these carrots are so twangy. Yeah. I was gonna carrots say, have twang. I was going to say, you really, you know, tomatoes not really like a great tone fruit. Uh, but like you, if you want apple to, if you want your apples to have that appropriate crunch, you really need to be using yeah. tone manure <laughs> to, for fertilizer. All right. We've been recording for way too long today. All right. <laughs> play, us, play us a song, The song Steve. was sent by, uh, uh, Janice Alala. Uh, thanks Janice. It's just, uh, I think it's just a jam. Looks like a jam in F minor. That's a jam from says. Janice.
jam yeah well, i'm a little just dis- i was s- sitting there with a video this on youtube i'm sitting there watching the whole time and she has a kazoo taped to the <laughs> microphone and i'm waiting there waiting for her to use the kazoo and she never did and now i feel like i feel let down i feel anxious about it like i need to see a kazoo be used now so that's my note all right bye everyone stay grounded <laughs>